Are you in the market to brew beer faster and save a ton of money? Well, look no further. These are my top tips and secrets that can shave years off your life. Keep your money in your bank account so you can spend it on other stuff you don't need. Number one, if I'm short of my pre-boil quantities, I need some last minute sparge water, I go straight to the coffee pot. This pot is old as hell. If mine works, then yours definitely works. Your coffee maker spits out liquid around 180 degrees. And this coffee pot is about, it's about a half gallon, about a growler. You can temp control it, but I just fill it up and then add some more room temperature water to it. Balance it back down to 170 degrees for sparge. And boom, you have heated sparge water in minutes. Pour it into a pot, fill the coffee maker back up with water, rinse your grains, come back for more sparge water. In all fairness, I've only done this a few times, but it works like a champ. Number two, this is a sous vide stick, 1000 watts. It's the newest member of my family. Obviously it's used to make delicious sous vide to eat, but I recently started using it for brew days as well. And thumbs up this video if you're watching this video right now. Couple things, it's from Inkbird, the greatest brand of all time. You better own an Inkbird by now. It's only $85 on Amazon, which is still much cheaper than going this route. Honestly, you can kind of make your own DIY electric brew system with this thing. It takes a long time to heat up, but it's not used to heat it up. It's, it's used to maintain it forever. Use propane to get to your desired heat fast, kill the gas, and then let this beast maintain the temperature. Just think of it as an inkbird temperature control, but with a heating element that kicks on when your liquid drops below your desired level. It's winter right now, so my mash tun cools down fast. Mash and sparge cool down fast, way too fast. I tested it at 152 degrees for an hour, came back to it one hour later, still 152. So I cranked the five gallons of water up to 170, used it, and it maintained it for another whole hour. I'm pretty sure it can go all night. Electric brew system, sort of. I wouldn't do kettle sours with it, but we'll see. The warranty says it can maintain temperatures up to 212, but I haven't found a reason for that yet. I recommend this, but only if you have the kettle for it. If your kettle is too wide, it might not touch your water. See, this is a 20 gallon kettle. Hello! So it's not gonna fit unless I'm heating up close to 20 gallons of water. And I do brew in a bag. So you're gonna wanna make sure everything fits. This thing is awesome, but only if it fits your system. Next tip is just the tip. If you've been watching my channel, you know I love dry hopping with these sous vide grade magnets. These magnets are strong and hold about an ounce to one and a half ounces of hops. Need to dry hop more than that? Easy fix, just get more magnets. Some of this stuff on the market is way too expensive. To be honest, this is probably my favorite hack. Dry hopping without oxygen while keeping your money in the bank. When you're ready to dry hop, just pull the magnet away and let the hops fall into your beer. Next tip. Using a metal grain for brewing a bag, B-I-A-B. -B. The bags work okay, but mine already has a small tear and it's kind of weird when I sparge with a bag. Seems like I pour water over the bag and it all just kind of goes to the outside. I recently got a new one from Clawhammer. It's the widest one I own. The wider, the better. Stay tuned for a full review on my next system next week. Food grade buckets with spigots on everything. Plastic buckets are my favorite option to use as fermenters. Home Depot carries the food grade ones for $5. They're in the paint aisle. And I put food grade spigots on everything. So you can use them as bottling buckets, fermenters, sandy buckets, etc. Siphoning is a nightmare and requires way too much dead weight labor. Drilling into plastic is a breeze. Use a spade bit to create your hole and then a step drill bit to make it bigger and smooth it out. I make these buckets for around $7. And if you do have any questions, we do a live stream every single Wednesday night where we talk about everything beer related. Link in bio to that channel. Lastly, here's a new one with Kavikis. Pitch your yeast hot. Back in the day, I used to chill my wart until I got it to about 70 degrees. But all I use these days is Kavike so I pitch it around 110. Saves a lot of water too. Kavike yeast loves producing great beer at high temperatures, which speed up the home brewing process significantly. And don't be afraid to use dry yeast. It used to have a bad rap, but now I think it's more popular than ever. To be honest, I'm never buying liquid yeast online ever again. Last time I did it, it was $25 for overnight delivery with ice packs. That's it. These are my favorite home brewing tips. See you guys on the live stream. And if we ever cross paths in real life, you owe me a beer.